I was a functioning alcoholic, I was a functioning drug addict. I lost everything, the bubble just burst. I lost my job. The person that I was dating for nine years, I lost my home. My head went 180 degrees and I tried to kill myself. St Giles started in 1962 very much as a homelessness charity, working with the people of Camberwell who were living in various hostels and other unpleasant accommodation. Our big priority now is developing people with lived experience. So we start with people who've been there, maybe it's criminal justice, maybe it's mental health or substance misuse, and we train them, develop them and support them so they can become really effective case workers and support workers who can help other people who are going through those issues. So my early years I was brought up by my parents who had divorced before I was born, so it was quite a volatile household. Before I was a teenager, my mother came out as gay and that had a lot of repercussions for me at school. My mum felt it was best if she left us in the care of family members, so I was in an unofficial kinship care. To the age of about 11 or 12, found myself staying with my father at 15 and it was very volatile and I was a traumatised teenager and really didn't know how to deal with my emotions and I found myself using drugs and other outlets for that trauma and anger and frustration that I felt um, and that landed me homeless at yeah, 15 years old and throughout my life I've been in the homeless several times. I found recovery for addiction in the last three years I've spent really focusing on that and getting my education back and trying to come back for the trauma that, that I experienced as a child and, and a young adult. I work with clients who are ex-offenders who are homeless. My life story is very very checkered. I've sold drugs, I've done credit card fraud, I was a pickpocket but it was survival. I have been homeless, so I used to go sofa surf, slept in doorways, slept on corridors or on the stairs of council estates, all that's behind me. I've been studying for the past four years, I'm doing a degree now, I want to do my masters and then become a lecturer. Being homeless around Christmas time has happened quite a few times, I have been lucky enough that my grandparents have reached out. But the last time I was homeless, I was fleeing domestic violence and I really didn't want anybody to see the state that I was in, that I was um, badly beaten at the time when I spent Christmas and New Year alone. That was the most horrible experience ever. Because no matter what happened in my life, nine times out of ten, my grandparents would reach out, especially during the festive period and stuff. And that time, I, I pushed them away. I didn't want them in all the situation. Our workers with lived experience get quicker engagement. They tend to get more honest responses more effectively from the client. Our workers can cut to the chase. They can go there straight away, find out what's going on. And sometimes that's so important because you could be talking about stuff like risk, where a youngster perhaps owes a thousand pounds to a drug gang. And if we don't find out that information quickly, we can't make them safe. My clients find it a lot easier to relate to me because they understand where I'm coming from and I understand where they're coming from and we can work together. And that's what we do at St. Charles. I've seen people who we've worked with as clients come and train as peer advisors, develop, and then move on to support other people. And that is so satisfying. You don't know what's behind somebody's story. You don't know what positions they're in and why they're on the street or why they find themselves in homeless accommodation and things. You can't make that judgment. You have to take the time to listen to the person. We would consider them experts by experience. Not only have they been trained by us, they also have their own empathy, their own understanding and sometimes their own detailed technical knowledge. I use my lived experience of addiction, homelessness, childhood trauma to support others and hopefully in a similar journey to mine where there's a positive pathway. The National Lottery has given us a huge amount of support to develop the peer programme. It's helped us set up regional projects and are now funding us for a national project that runs across the whole of the UK. We're helping to change the culture of many other charities and areas in terms of who they will employ and who they'll think is a good worker. It's giving people jobs and then the people that are getting the jobs are going out there and they're helping people who can't help themselves. I hope to believe that the National Lottery keeps on investing its money and funding St. Giles because we're doing such a great job out there.